Next, let's look at some real cases of great leadership in Asia-Pacific. You might notice some of the characteristics we've talked about in each case. We'll look at six cases, three at policy level and three at community level. In Thailand, one man, Dr. Gowit Warapipat, had a deep commitment to giving everyone learning opportunity. Especially for people living in rural and remote areas of Thailand. Dr. Gowit had a special philosophy that he called Kit Ben. Kit Ben means the ability to think and emphasize the link between thinking and learning. He imagined a world where everyone could use knowledge and thought to guide their practice. Acting on his vision, he helped build many places for learning, such as in the eastern region of Thailand. He started small, sharing the importance of giving adults places to learn in his government, and promoted the link between learning, thinking and doing in his schools. Dr. Gowit helped establish what we know today as the Department of Non-Formal Education in Thailand. Another leader, Dr. Kunying Kasama Warawa Na Ayutthaya, built on this legacy. By sustaining commitment for non-formal education in Thailand, following its inclusion in the National Education Act, and developing programs which were dialogue and action-oriented, such as Thailand's Functional Literacy Programme with UNESCO. She has always said it is her team's and Thailand's achievements rather than her own. Thailand's examples are a great illustration of the link between vision and action and how lifelong learning plays a role. Moving to Indonesia, during the 70s, where many in remote areas were not able to read and write, one man wanted to make a change believing that everyone had the right to literacy. His name was Dr. Washington Napitpulu. Dr. Washington listened closely to local people and found that people were excited about learning when working together in groups and when it helped them to solve real problems in their community and created Learning Keja Paket A, a literacy toolkit which showed learners how they could use their new knowledge in their communities. Dr. Washington's case is a great example of compassion and the importance of listening to those you serve. Meanwhile, in Rajasthan, India, where many girls did not have access to education and where communities could not always control what they learned, Dr. Anil Bordia knew that radical change was needed. He knew it was important that all girls and women had access to education. And education itself needed to be for and governed by the local community. He started small, trying to improve education opportunities for girls and giving local communities a voice. In 1988, he created the Log Jumbish Project. The project was run in collaboration between the local government of Rajasthan village core groups and national government. He knew that involving communities was vital, but also saw that he would need other partners as well. So he engaged everyone in it, seeking funding from the government of Sweden, and later bridged new partnerships when this was no longer possible through the UK government. Dr. Anil's case is a great example of how collaboration plays a vital role in effective leadership. Next, let's look at the three cases at community level. Hasina Shajan was inspired after a return trip to her home country of Afghanistan to move back with one mission, to empower girls to get an education and earn a livelihood. Hasina began small, working on the ground to support women's education, founding a small non-profit called Aid Afghanistan for Education, but also wanted to make support sustainable. So she founded Bumi, a for-profit textile company as a funding source, which also creates jobs for women. 
She also works with government and a range of other partners to help align her programs with the formal system and expand it to cover 26 provinces and 12,500 learners by 2020. Hasina is a great case of how leaders are problem solvers and make small changes to bring their vision into reality. Moving to the Thai-Myanmar border. When Chitko, a 13-year-old boy, was at risk of dropping out of school because of school-related fees, his teacher went to the boy's home and changed his life. Stepping in to cover expenses herself, she told his family to trust her and keep him in education. In 2016, Chitko received the top score in the non-formal primary education examination in Kayin State and is now studying in middle school. Sometimes, one leader's courageous action can change the course of a life. Samat Chai Pinpong's humble beginnings spurred him to make a difference for the most vulnerable children in Thailand. After Samat Chai converted an abandoned building near the border to a learning centre for stateless children, he stepped up to drive his vision forward on his own, as a leader will always do when no one else can. Driving his small truck 30 kilometres every day to pick them up for school. A clear illustration that when no one else can, a leader will take it upon themselves to make the change. These stories are tribute to the fact that if a leader's determination is resolute, nothing is impossible. We can all be change makers, and the good news is, you can start now. <laughs>